Okay. Hi, everyone. Hope you're all having a good day so far. I think after this talk, there is lunch, so I'll try not to take too much of your time. Uh, so coming to securing your WordPress sites. Uh, well, uh, before starting a bit about me, uh, I'm Atisham, and uh, I'm from Pakistan, and I work for Automatic uh, uh, as a happiness engineer on the WordPress.com team, as Shibangi said. We have other products as well, like uh, Chatpack, WooCommerce, that uh, some or maybe most of you already know about. And uh, apart from like uh, helping people make awesome websites, uh, I also uh, I'm a bit into IP networks, DNS. Uh, I like to study how the internals of internet work, and uh, obviously cybersecurity as well. Uh, I'm also like a really lazy blogger. If I want to like write on something, I'll just keep delaying it to, to the next day. So my blog hasn't been updated in like months or maybe a year. Okay. So in the earlier talks, you may have heard about this statistic that uh, WordPress now powers more than 28% percent of, uh, of all the websites that exist on the internet. Uh, another even interesting fact is that uh, out of all the top uh, uh, 10,000 websites, more than 50% are powered by website uh, WordPress. So it's a pretty uh, huge number. Uh, if something gets this famous, it, it also attracts bad guys like hackers. And why is that? Because like if hackers are able to find even a, a small vulnerability in one of the themes or plugins, like they uh, lick their lips because uh, all, the, all they have to do is uh, build an automatic, uh, automa uh, automated sca scanner or a bot that will scan all the uh, websites on the internet and they get a huge list of websites that, that they can target with a click, click of a button. So no huge effort involved. Uh, another uh, thing is that uh, WordPress is extremely modular like anyone can uh, start writing plugins or themes for it. And this uh, kind of exposes uh, this, uh, the security factor because uh, if someone is not using good security practices in building their themes and plugins, it exposes uh, uh, a lot of the WordPress ecosystem that we have. Now, before uh, continuing, I, I'd like to clarify a few misconceptions that a lot of people have uh, regarding security. Uh, like they think that they think that if uh, you install a security plugin and uh, tr try and uh, set all your plugins and themes to auto update, that's all the thing you need to keep your site secure. Well, it it, it is one of the most important factors. You should keep all your uh, plugins, themes, and everything updated. But it's not the everything. It comes later. Uh, you have to start from your base, and the base is like your mind that the mindset that you have about security the devices that you use uh, on a daily basis to manage and update your website uh, so that's the first step and uh, i'll divide this talk into three layers of security starting from your own self um, there's a very common saying that uh, you're as secure as the network you're on the network you're connected to for example the wi-fi network of this uh, convention center uh, well, uh, I got a question for uh, you folks. Like, uh, what uh, method do you use to, like, upload uh, files to your web host or edit the files that already are there on the web server? Like, what tools do you use or what protocol? Most of you. Like, FTP. Most of you use FTP, FileZilla, or something else. Yeah. Right. So, and uh, how many of you have uh, like websites that are like secured uh, by an HTTPS certificate? Okay, and the rest I think they don't use uh, HTTPS maybe, perhaps. Okay, so wh why F uh, FTP is a bad thing? Yeah, so the problem with FTP is uh, it's one of the like, uh, as bad as you can imagine protocols are there today because it, all the data is transmitted over plain text. If I'm connected to your network, like if you're connected to this Wi-Fi network, right, and you're trying to upload files to your web host, I can come in, intercept your traffic, and read all the data you're tra transmitting to your web host. For example, your username, passwords, or whatever files you're uh, uploading to your server, I can read all of that. And uh, with HTTPS, uh, and there are two two things. Uh, can someone tell me like how HTTPS benefits the 
client side as well as you as a website admin or developer, like two benefits of HTTPS. Can someone tell me? Yeah, please. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. So if you're not using HTTPS and if you log into your website into the WP admin panel, uh, again, anyone on the same network can intercept all of that traffic, get your cookies, get your username, password, and your whole site. Even if it's the most updated website, latest updates, a uh, world-class security plugin, it's all going to be exposed. Um, so it's just, it's just not on the, your local network. For example, if your traffic is uh, from where, wherever your traffic is passing, your internet service provider, uh, they all can see the, that traffic. And uh, how it's basically done is uh, it's a, it's a attack called a man in the middle attack, MITM. Uh, so uh, what it does is like it's a, it's a simplified diagram here. Uh, what it does is usually uh, when on your com uh, device, mobile device or a computer, your, that device is communicating with the router or default gateway that you have. That uh, router will have a switch built in as well that handles the local uh, clients on the Wi-Fi network or local network. Now an attacker can uh, connect to your network and intercept that traffic. Now it will trick your device into thinking that it is communicating uh, with the default gateway. But uh, in actual, you'll be communicating uh, with the uh, hacker's device. And then the hacker will be forwarding all those uh, traffic further to the intended uh, website. So this is the attack that can, like, the risk of it can be minimized if you're using HTTPS or any uh, SSH for managing your uh, website. Uh, better yet, you use SFTP, that's uh, over the secure network. And uh, some, if someone is trying to man in the middle, uh, you, uh, your browser will throw a security certificate error. So never ignore those security certificates error because it's mostly someone's trying to intercept your traffic. Another thing that you should keep in mind is uh, no matter where, uh, where you're using those pass passwords, if, even if it's your own WordPress website or other social media accounts, never repeat passwords. Like don't use the same password on all the accounts that you have and also keep them as long complicated as possible. Why? Uh, it's because like, it makes brute force and dictionary based attacks a lot more difficult. And uh, in case uh, the website uh, where you have an account, in, even if it gets hacked and all its database is uh, dumped online, uh, it's, it, it will usually be in a form uh, usually known as a, a hash. Uh, commonly people use uh, MD5 hash. So, uh, people can go and look up online database. There, there are different databases for hashes. If you're using a simple password, your hash will be reverse looked up in merely a few seconds. But if you have a complicated password, uh, cracking that will like take forever, maybe forever, yeah. And uh, another bit about the devices you're using, never rely on your antivirus. It's as secure as the latest update that you installed on that antivirus. Now, what about the zero days and uh, viruses or malware that is not detected by those antiviruses yet? How can you secure yourself from those? Use a sandbox. Uh, a sandbox is kind of an environment where you're able to run different kind of programs without giving direct access uh, to those programs to your computer directly. So it provides a safe environment for their execution. If you are a Windows user, you can use Sandboxy. It's a free program for home use. And if you're in Linux or uh, Macintosh, you can use uh, a virtual machine for that. VirtualBox is a free uh, VM software. Now coming to harden uh, hardening the WordPress installation itself. Uh, I was reading a, a report from security that uh, the websites they were studying, uh, at least uh, half of them uh, were outdated WordPress installations. That's one of the factors that contributes to the hacked websites, like they aren't uh, updated. And uh, another interesting fact was that uh, out, out of uh, all those uh, uh, websites that they studied, 18% uh, belonged to 
like they were using three plugins that were like what, one, of the, one of the most famous plugins, but they were outdated. So that also contributed to the hacked websites. Now the first step that you can do to secure the WordPress installation is uh, enable two-factor authentication. Even if your username and password gets hacked, the two-factor authentication provides uh, protection in the sense that uh, even if someone tries to log into your website, it is secure, it has no uh, other database vulnerabilities, it has a HTTPS connection, but your username and password is leaked. Uh, the hacker won't be able to log into your website and it will requ uh, require a security code to be able to log in after entering the right username and password. You can use different plugins for enabling two-factor authentic authentication. You can use Jetpack, Authy, Google Authenticator, they're different, you can Google for them. And use CAPTCHA, CAPTCHA everything. Does anyone know Sarah Connor? Yeah, Skynet, <laughs> okay. So like Google uh, is doing this thing these days, like uh, whenever it suspects that a bot is using your computer, it displays a capture. And someone made a funny meme out of it that about the capture. So yeah, uh, protect your username, uh, the login page with a capture so that automated tools cannot uh, attempt to sign into your website multiple times or 100 times per minute. That will protect it. If you're using any plugins that are outdated or you're not actively using them, please, please, please disable and delete them because uh, uh, outdated plugins are one of the most, uh, the leading factors that uh, lead to hacked websites. Also use a plugin that uh, regularly backs up your site. You can use any plugin for that uh, because they provide, provide protection in the case that even if your website does get hacked, you can uh, restore to a previous version anytime you want. So the risk factor is uh, a bit uh, mitigated because of the backups. Now, there are like two, the most common attack factors that hackers use to penetrate into your website. One is the SQL injection, and the other is uh, cross-site scripting. Uh, if you like go uh, online, for the link I've mentioned, and if you search for WordPress there, you'll see that uh, most of the vulnerabilities uh, these days coming up are based on third-party plugins and themes. So their developers don't incorporate secure coding practices. For example, uh, if someone uh, tr finds a SQL injection vulnerability, what it does is, uh, now how SQL injection works is, basically, if you're accepting user input from uh, the browser and you have to use it in a SQL qu uh, qu query, and if you don't uh, sanitize that, or uh, someone uh, malicious can uh, like uh, inject code that runs its own SQL query on top of it, and it will like give access to direct access to your beta database to that hacker. Another is uh, cross-site scripting. Again, if you're accepting user input and you don't uh, validate it first at the uh, user side and then uh, don't escape it before displaying it back to the user. Any malicious hacker can inject JavaScript code into your browser. What it does is it can um, help the hacker steal your cookies and also uh, execute any JavaScript that you have, uh, any JavaScript that he wants uh, into your browser's uh, context. I've mentioned a link here at the bottom. Uh, it is a WordPress.org's own uh, resource uh, into how you can build a secure plugins and themes. So, if, some, if there's any, any developer out here and uh, they want to like uh, read more about how to build secure themes and plugins, please uh, do give it a read. And uh, you can also like uh, search uh, different vulnerability databases uh, to see what are the most common uh, uh, vulnerabilities present in the WordPress ecosystem these days. Now, another thing that can uh, help in securing your websites is uh, obscurity. Obscurity by itself doesn't uh, provide uh, like in, uh, inherited protection to your code base or your database. But it, what it does is it, it can make it difficult for your website to be found by automatic scans and tools. One of the things you can do is uh, change the default uh, path or the URL of WP Admin or all the login interfaces. There are different, different plugins out there that can do this job for you. 
Another thing that you can do is uh, disable access to the WP config file over uh, the web or the browser. Again, a lot of security plugins can do this job for you. And uh, lastly, for the uploads directory that you have, like it, it has to be writable, right? Because if someone or you yourself want to upload data to your uh, WordPress installation, uh, it has to be writable. But this allow PHP or script execution in that directory. How you can do that? It, it, uh, you can Google for like uh, uh, for HT access code for it. There are different. Uh, uh, in fact, there even on the WordPress.org website, there's an HT access code for uh, preventing uh, script execution in the uploads directory. So you can use that. Now the third part uh, is uh, how you can like host your site on a secure environment. This is something you probably won't have a lot of control over because uh, a lot of people use uh, shared web hosts and uh, it can be difficult to control the policies of that web host on how you want to implement security features. But some of the things that you can do are like uh, go with a, a web host that has a reputation of uh, taking security seriously. For example, do they install latest security patches on a regular basis? all the PHP, Nginx, or Apache updates that come up, do they do it on a regular basis? And uh, also, like, uh, do they have uh, PHP execu uh, shell commands disabled? Because uh, if a hacker gains access to your uh, server, they'll most probably try to upload a PHP shell to that web host. And if a PHP shell execution is not disabled, what, uh, they will be able to run uh, command line uh, commands on your server, all the Linux commands that uh, web uh, hosts uh, usually have. And uh, lastly, this OWASP is an open web application uh, security project. Uh, it maintains an updated database of uh, all the web vulnerabilities uh, that exist and how to properly mitigate them. Uh, I've linked it, so I'll suggest you to take a look at uh, OWASP uh, WordPress security guidelines. It is very detailed and uh, provide in-depth detail on uh, how you can uh, secure your web servers, your web application, all those things. So those are the three basic layers of security. And uh, that's all I had for today. If you have any questions for me. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Adisham. Uh, yes, like Atisham just said, you are, if you want to have any, you know, ask any yeah. questions, if you have any doubts. Yes, the gentleman over there. Can I have the mic over to him, please? All right. Uh, uh, I'd like to learn from you. Uh, if there's a new computer called quantum computer, have you heard of it? Quant quantum, quantum computer? Quantum computing. Yeah. Because that computer is equals one million computers, so uh, I'm not sure if uh, I mean uh, it's pretty sensitive. I hope you all understand. I'm also learning. If a hacker were to build a quantum computer, which is very expensive uh, to build, but they really got the resources to build a quantum computer to hack a, a, any important website, how would we like have a countermeasure for this kind of powerful computing? Besides the, yeah, I just want to ask. Yeah. So. When we talk about quantum computing, it's, it can mostly be used to crack present-day encryption. Because with the current computers that we have uh, and proper encryption techniques that we have, for example, AES, uh, it can take forever to crack that encryption. But if a, a quantum computer is built, uh, such encryption will be like, rendered useless. So there will be like, a need to develop something that can counter quantum computers. But we aren't there yet, so don't have a definite answer on how we can countered the computing power of quantum computers. Okay, thank you. Then, uh, don't mind I ask a second question, right? Yeah. I mean, I quite, I saw some, <laughs> don't mind. Yeah, I, I know that there's something called a master key. You know, when, when all the software or any internet or protocol has this thing called master key, but if it's leaked to a hacker, I mean, sorry, I'm asking a bit more deeper question. So, have you heard of this called the... Uh, what? Uh, it's called, because, yeah. It means it has links to all the. It means it's a kind of a key that is links to all the programming and all the codes around the world. No, there's no like. Uh, there's no master key. There's right? no universal that, key. That, that's that a documentary. I don't know. Sorry. Yeah. That's so us, yeah, so sorry. there's no universal key that can grant you access to decrypt any type of encryption that you have. 
depends on the encryption that you have. For example, asymmetric encryption or asymmetric in encryption, you'll have your own uh, private keys for that. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, sure. Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Shahi from uh, Malaysia. Um, I would like to ask about uh, some of the recommendations or things that we implement to minimize the risk of attack or the damages in case of an attack uh, is through obscurity. For example, you uh, mentioned just now to disallow web access to WP, WP config and also to prevent uh, PHP execution in the uh, WP content uploads folder. So these are very practical and very easily implemented solutions. Uh, not solutions. Um, uh, something that you can do, something that any uh, web admin can do. Why is there any reason why this has not been made default in WordPress? Well, so when I talk about uh, changing the default WP admin uh, and uh, login uh, structure, as I said, it's obscurity. It doesn't make you automatically more secure. It just makes your site uh, difficult to be found by automated scanners. But if someone does uh, want to target you and they know about your site and they look up your site manually, it, does, it is not an issue for them. It, it's just like making your site difficult to be found by automatic, automatic scanners. It's not inherently insecure thing. You just like uh, uh, prevent all the traffic coming to your site in terms of automatic uh, bots. Uh, for yes, in, in that sense, it actually decreases the likelihood of your site being targeted, uh, especially for uh, regular people who are not really uh, tech savvy or who are not developers. So if we can do something that reduces that likelihood, wouldn't it be good to include it in the uh, default WordPress score itself rather than... Uh, yes, because uh, when you install WordPress, uh, these, uh, these are not applied. You need to actually modify the HTXS and add those. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, but for the bug majority of users who are using WordPress as a blog, who does not know how to do these things, it will not be applicable to them. Yeah, so the core, the WordPress core, like it follows a single uh, pattern, but if you are, like if you provide too many options to an end user who doesn't know like what that option means. It can be a bit of uh, a complicated matter to all set up all this thing. But by uh, inherently it, uh, changing the path doesn't mean you're making yourself more secure. It just means you're trying to hide yourself, hide your side from automatic scanners. Yeah. All right, do we have any more questions? Uh, hi, so I have a question. Huh? So basically what you just went, like brush through are the measures that we can take to help secure our sites. But do you use any, like for example, vulnerability scanning tools to actually ensure that your site is secure? Okay, that's a good question. So if you want to stay on top of uh, all the vulner vulnerabilities that are being discovered, you can, to, uh, you can use a tool, uh, WP Scan. It's a free and open source tool. Uh, it's regularly maintained. Uh, you can use it uh, 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 on Linux, or even if you like uh, try and modify things, you can. You might be able to run it on other operating systems as well. So, uh, yeah, to stay on top, uh, use WP Scan, or if you're using a security plugin, it uh, it will also often have a feature that will like scan your uh, installed files for any uh, vulnerabilities, known vulnerabilities that might exist uh, in the code. So yeah, two options for you. I'll, I'll just pass the mic to you. No problem. <laughs> uh, like the guy, the gentleman mentioned about those uh, scanners, right? Do you have any blacklist? Because the scanner must know what to blacklist. You see, I don't, if you have a scan, what what are the blacklist databases, right? You recommend? Because I was trying to think of how to input those uh, websites that. Uh, you can block them from uh, scanning our website. Uh, so you're uh, bl blacklist because certain uh, certain websites, right? They are actually bots. You know, they are actually hitting on our WordPress website. So you got any blacklist database that uh, you can recommend that we can buy from or we can 
get it from a website or forum, anything. Thanks. Okay, so if I got your question right, you're talking about uh, how to detect and blacklist if any uh, if anyone uh, malicious or a, a scanner is trying to like scan your website, right? Uh, I think what he what he means to ask is like, is there a database out there that you can refer to which has a list of you know, blacklisted services or something. Yeah, that, that's scanning uh, his website. Okay, so I'm not sure if there's a single database for it, but uh, some security plugins like automatically blacklist certain IPs uh, that uh, are known to be found uh, uh, either spamming or trying to attack uh, different websites. Uh, I think uh, Jetpack, Jetpack does that uh, built in, and uh, there might be other plugins as well that do this job. All right. Yeah, I, I just want to add on to this point. I think these kind of things, right, there, there cannot be a universal database, from what I understand, because there are a lot of uh, new such malicious uh, things, you know, coming up every day. So we, we had a really s serious uh, malicious were attacks recently, you must have heard, which was huge all over the world. So, yeah. All right. Uh, I just want to add, uh, there's one, like, uh, security service provider, there's security.net, you can try their service. They have a free malware scanner for WordPress websites and they provide like page security consultant service for uh, WordPress websites and many other PHP related websites. So you can try that. They, ma they may have a blacklist to like and some norms how you can more advancedly secure websites. That's security.net. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. All right, so any more questions? So I, I, I see that this is a very burning hot topic because everyone wants to have their website secured. So just find your speakers that you are interested to ask more questions during the break, so just find them here. Uh, so thank you, Adisham, very much for answering all the yeah. questions. Yeah, no problem. Feel thank free you. to yeah. yeah, feel free to just, just Feel free to like, uh, approach yeah, us, yeah. Just uh, yeah, before we close, uh, I thought